All right. It's not often that um, some basic things really cause me to struggle to having done this almost 20 years. But in this case of vitreo macular traction, boy, did I ever struggle with this posterior hyaloid and getting this uh, vitreous elevated up. Uh, and I had to really go back to the fundamentals. First of all, one of the things that I was taught early on in my fellowship is uh, this up and out maneuver. Uh, Dr. Tim Murray really instilled great fundamentals in us. And uh, this is one of the things he taught us is you kind of go along the eye wall and try and shear uh, the vitreous off of the optic nerve head. So it's kind of an up and out motion. You have to be very confident and comfortable with that so that you don't auger into the retina as you're going up and out. Uh, but it can be successful. Here, I actually had to utilize ICG to help stain the vitreous. I uh, use it almost like I use Kenalog uh, to be able to, or try a trimcinolone to be able to stain the vitreous to see how it's reacting. Uh, I think there's a few keys uh, to getting a successful vitreous separation. One is full occlusion of the vitreous in the cutter. The second is this up and out motion. Um, third, if necessary, visualization. Where I finally have success is actually here in a minute, I'm gonna turn my cutter probe more posterior to further engage the vitreous. It's a little bit of a uh, technically more difficult move to do. Uh, and I would caution um, people who don't have experience to actually do it. Got a little bit of a infusion overrun there. Here I turn my cutter port towards the vitreous starting over the optic nerve head. And that just allows me to better engage that vitreous. Uh, to be able to have better purchasing power with my 25 gauge cutter. And then finally here, you'll see, I'll be able to actually elevate that hyaloid with this move right here, up and out along the arcade. And finally we have some separation. And once you get that first edge up, now you can come back and get under the edge of the vitreous. I'll use my cutter uh, with aspiration, almost like a pick to try and help elevate it. Very attached posterior hyaloid. Uh, once again, this patient had vitromacular traction, so it was a, it was a tough one, um, and we just kind of go around and just try and free up that vitreous uh, and elevate it anteriorly. Now, in cases like this, I'll try to get the vitreous out as far as I safely can. Uh, if I start to see hemorrhages developing in the retina or traction on the retina, I'll stop. In this case, I got it up to about the equator temporally and just a little posterior to the equator nasally. Um, sometimes doing a vitrectomy actually allows fluid to dissect that vitreous up. And in this case, it didn't help much. Working on that nasal vitreous, which was really stuck down uh, just nasal to that optic nerve, uh, probably could use a little bit more magnification. There we go. As we're elevating things and we do get it up. And then because this patient had vitreo macular traction, I want to make sure that it hadn't developed into a macular hole. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to reapply some ICG and um, that allows me to better see my ILM. And I'm going to go ahead and just peel this ILM just on the off chance that there might have been a small something or other there. And to make sure I've gotten rid of any epiretinal membrane uh, type formation that can sometimes occur in these patients with VMT and a partial macular separation. I, I like to take whatever the ILM is going to give me. So this is a pinch and peel technique with these 44 forceps. This is also with that green enhancement mode that I just love so much, uh, courtesy of the ingenuity. Uh, when I say I take what I can, uh, basically if the ILM starts to go a certain direction as I'm peeling it, I just go with it. And then I use that first strip that I peeled as kind of a fulcrum. And the center point of that first strip is... Uh, is the fovea. So now I can just sort of peel around the fovea. This is real time. I try not to edit this, uh, this part because I do think it's valuable to see how we do our pinch and peel. I'm going to try and get this ILM up usually for about a disc diameter in all directions, sometimes a disc diameter and a half. Stay away from the fovea. I go for the place uh, that I have the best visualization and that I feel will give me the best, most uh, confluent peel. Here, once again, just kind of getting at the edge of that prior strip that I initiated with and taking care to make sure that I'm not pinching too deep, very gently maneuvering that ILM off. I like this swipe move so I don't take my forceps out of the eye and uh, wipe them off. I keep my forceps in the eye. Now I do go back in and vitrectomize to remove the debris. Uh, I felt like the ILM was intact, so I didn't put it in a gas bubble. Uh, good peripheral depressed examination, and because it's a 25-gauge case, it's sutureless. Thanks for watching.